Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Magic Friday. I am your host, Jamie D. Grant, and we've got lots to talk about as always. I got a lot of good response about my essay about uh, how many tricks you should know. I kind of talked about it on the last Magic Friday. So we're going to talk about something else at the end of this review. It has to do with my jacket, believe it or not, kind of. Anyway, uh, Magic Friday though. Every year... Uh, for Christmas, most of my corporate work comes at Christmas. It's usually barbecues in the summer, Christmas gigs in the uh, in the winter, and then you know adult birthday parties throughout the rest of the year. So every Christmas, I try and take uh, a new trick and add it to my repertoire uh, of my of my go-to effects. I try to add one. I mean, I add a lot of stuff throughout the year anyway, in and out, but I try and put one in every Christmas that I will use forever. So every nine years, I rotate. This year, uh, we added, we being the royal we, Garrett Thomas, Stand Up Monty. Stand Up Monty, actually, I had a really old joke. I used to do um, a stage show, well, I still have a stage show, but I used to do a stage show trick that had uh, Three Card Monty. I'm a huge Three Card Monty fan. And, oh God, this was terrible. I. I answered a phone on stage so long ago and someone on the other end was teaching me how to play three card Monty but I brought up the suitcase and it says you know uh, Monty and I'd be my line was has anyone ever played three card Mont and that was like it was a, it was only a joke for the uh, for the English teachers of the world I mean I just I find Mont really really funny um, I, I didn't ever do that routine on stage again. Anyway, I'm always sidetracking. Stand up on the uh, Garrett Thomas, Magic Friday, it killed. As we all know. Anytime you see me review something that's, you know, trick of the century, which this one was or is, you know it's going to go well, right? So let me just go straight into what the audience sees. The interesting thing about this for uh, Magic Friday, I did all day Friday, as well as all the gigs I've been doing it at, is that I never performed the routine the same way twice. Uh, Garrett, don't get me wrong, Garrett has a very start-finish, and it's perfect, but for me, I never performed it twice. And the great thing about this is that he gives you so many... He get, well, there's not so many moves kind of a couple moves that just do a lot of things but it, he gives you an arsenal to just play with the audience because you can stop it or keep it going for as long or short as you like so for real world like actually performing worth its weight in gold so I'll show you one of the more common ways that it actually played out all right has anyone ever seen the four queen trick it's uh it's quite good it involves a queen Obviously, or it wouldn't be called the four queen trick now, would it? I don't, okay, all right. So here's the uh, here's what the trick consists of. You're supposed to guess where the queen is. Uh, for example, it's right here. If I had a second card, however, it gets a little bit more tricky. Uh, do me a favor. Hold your hand out flat for me. Perfect. Just a little bit flatter. Hold on to that. Now, a lot of people are thinking that they should be focusing on that card, but really, I said it's the queen trick. You should be looking over here. I know some of you are beginning to be suspicious and think that this looks a lot like that game of three card Monty, the old game where they would take a queen and two other cards and you would have to uh, guess where it is. And that's pretty accurate because that's exactly what we're doing. I'll give you a hint, however, it's not there. Okay, do me a favor, hold on to the queen for me. Now, like I said before, a lot of people are looking here when I'm trying to help you out here. You should be looking over here. That would be amazing. Is that possible? Turn it over. How? 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 We'll try. We'll try it again. The uh, the queen and the four. We'll mix them up. That would be amazing. There's no way. See, people are looking here when really they should be looking over here. I don't know how I do it. That's really fantastic we'll just put that away sometimes it's a little bit hard to follow with the queen so we'll just do the uh the two four trick instead of the four queen trick just the uh the two fours now where is the queen i know some of you are thinking that it's in my pocket i'm, t I'm trying to help you guys out here really i'm not that kind of guy here let me let me grab one more of these cards let's see if we can end this on a 
on a high note. Queen and two fours. Here's the thing. Hold your hand out for me. Perfect. Hold on to that and we'll see if I can mix these up face up for you. I know what you're thinking. The queen is now down there, but it's not. Uh, that's how magic works is sometimes we cheat and that's why this is actually called the three fours trick. Not the uh, not the four queen trick. The queen, of course, is still still in my pocket. All right, I'm actually gonna make a confession. When I told you that this was called the four queen trick, it it wasn't actually. It's uh, it's actually called the three queen trick. That's how this game kind of works. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, it's really, it's funny performing to a camera because you're trying to make up voices in your head. So, uh, I have no idea what that demo looked like. All I can tell you is how it went. In a group, there is uh, so much byplay. It's, uh, it's great. I mean, that's what you want, right? I mean, no one, as a magician, especially a working magician, or if you're, you know, showing your friends at school or whatever, no one wants to have this. That's it. And sometimes Magic Friday is that. Happy Magic Friday, everyone. I'll see you next week. But when you really do, you want to, you know, you want to talk, you want to have conversation, you want to, you know, explore. And that's what's amazing about uh, Garrett's Stand Up Monty is that, you know, when they're turning that card in their hand, you're not grabbing it and moving on. Like there's, you know, there, there's, there's byplay, there's byplay, and you and you need to use that to your utmost advantage of connecting with them. So. You know, when I'm taking the card off their hand and it's changed, you know, I'm taking, I'm taking those breaks, I'm taking those moments. Uh, a lot of those moments in the working environment are to applaud because I want to make noise so that people can tell that we're having a good time. So, you know, when that four changes into, changes into a queen, I'm not going and it changes into a queen and I'll take a look if I do. I'm going, that's amazing, isn't, oh my god, if you guys could see what's going on right here, an elephant just flew and landed on her hand and she started to juggle. That was incre- that was amazing. Like, you know, like there's- and that's happening a lot in this routine. Like there's- there's a lot of breaks there. I don't know how many, uh, changes there are, but... So, how it went, fantastic. Um, uh, what else we talk about? The difficulty. The difficulty for this is, uh... It's not... It's not hard. It's not technically hard. It's not technically hard. But there is a memorization of the order of, of what you're doing and, and the progression. If you forget the order or something and you just, you know, stop, it doesn't matter. Um, there is some potential for disaster if you're not careful. But if you're careful and you practice, this, this will last a lifetime. And it's just one of those things, cards in the pocket, off you go. So it's not the, uh, it's definitely not the easiest trick I've ever done. I won't lie to you. Um, but you're not performing 19 anti pharaohs and then, you know, having to memorize the deck backwards. So difficulty, let me, the difficulty is worth it. Let's put it that way. And you'll have it down in like an afternoon of, you know, of repeating, 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 repeating. You'll try it out, you'll remember, you'll try it out, you'll remember more. So yeah, definitely. Um, best lines? The, uh, it's like shock and awe for the best lines. The best lines come from not the person holding the card, but from the reciprocal blast to the other four people. The best lines are usually, you know, turn that over. Like they they cannot believe that it's that it's happening. Or did you? I think he's actually the same line as in the video. Did you feel that? Like they're what what exactly are they? They're feeling the like, mm, ghosts coming. I don't know what they're feeling. Um, but those yeah. Did you feel it? Oh, I'm running out of. I got six minutes on my thing. I'll be quick. Um, best lines. Yep. Difficulty. How it went. What the audience saw. Angry Bob. Um, I'm getting Angry Bob a lot these days, and it's funny because you would think that Angry Bob would be looking, would be studying magic, you know, to try and kibosh me, but don't forget, Angry Bob's an angry person. He's always angry. It's not like he's uh, focused on me and he goes home at night and can't sleep and 
is studying magic to get me back. He's just always angry, but he loves he loves magic. Don't get me wrong. Um, and he loves busting me more than probably his own children, if he had children. But there was nothing, uh, you know, a couple times he's kind of doing the grabby motion of, you know, let me see those, but no. Can you see? No. Don't, don't touch me. You know, again, even Angry Bob likes byplay. Um, is this a magician fooler then? Um, actually, I would say, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it fooled fooled me like it's just it's just magical right it's magical it's funny when people talk about magician foolers because a lot of magicians only get the chance to perform for magicians you know you, your friends are magicians and you want to show them this new thing and that's where they kind of do their magic um so and a lot of guys like that and, uh, yes they cannot figure out what i've done and i own it first um that's not what this is about this is about being a working routine that you're gonna be able to show other people forever. That's a good closing thought. Okay, the um, the jacket. Uh, I saw a really amazing video the other day. Uh, it's got swear words. I might link it, I might not. But it was an amazing podcast about uh, talking about uh, haters and people that are negative. And I know a lot of people that perform magic experience this. And it was just a wonderful thing. There was one line particularly, which was 100% uh, of all haters in the world are unrealized potential. And that line, uh, it, it really stuck with me because, you know, if someone were to say to me, you know, hey, nice jacket, goof, you know, like that, that, that affects you, you know, like, you know, it's hard to, to not have that affect you and say, that didn't happen by the way, because this jacket's awesome. But if it did, you know, you're kind of like, oh man, why does that guy, you know, hate me? Or why, why is this happening to me? And going on the theory of that's just his unrealized potential coming out really is a, is a great way to get past those moments. You know, I don't think of, I wouldn't think, well, why does this guy hate me? I, I'd be, I'd feel sorry for that guy and be like, man, he's, he's channeling his energy into, oh, that, that jacket's, you know, stupid as opposed to, Hey, I wonder what magic uh, I'll be learning after you know after school or after work. It was just a, it's just a really good line, and I I know a, a lot of people kind of email me and you know how do you deal with you know the angry bobs of the world and people that really kind of and I'm I'm naturally deflective. I usually can laugh off anything, but when it comes specifically to to haters as we call them, unrealized potential is just a great way to just view them. And just to let yourself know that it has nothing to do with you. It's not, it's not personal. If they're, you know, nice card trick, it, it, you know, it has nothing to do with the card trick or you. Nothing. It's just their own unrealized potential. Just that it has to, it has to get out some way. And it's either going to get come out as success or, you know, in their case, as, as just being not nice. So you can't ever take it personally. Don't ever let it. Don't let it bother you. Don't let it worry you. And uh, yeah, feel sorry for them. Hope that they can become like you and practice and learn something they love and do it well. I think that's about it. That's my Magic Friday. Have a great week and I will see you next time.